Hi, I'm Mark Ray Mundy with MMAfighting.com here in Las Vegas at the brand new UFC Performance Institute with UFC Vice President James Kimball and Forrest Griffin. And they are kind enough today to take us on a tour of the brand new 30,000 square foot state of the art facility. So we'll be doing that, we'll be going through and seeing all the cool things, the nutrition, technology, and science that the UFC's put together for its athletes. Let's start. Lead the way, gentlemen. Yeah, obviously keeping UFC athletes healthy and even when they do get hurt invariably, which, which will occur, trying to get them back to play as soon as possible. So we have a dedicated recovery zone right off of the locker rooms. Here's our cryotherapy unit and our laser light therapy pod right here. So whole body laser light therapy technology, and cryo unit, cryotherapy unit, and then right behind us is our hydrotherapy unit. Okay, pardon my ignorance here, but what exactly is this this light therapy? What well, is how does how does this work? This is not a tanning book. No, no. It's, <laughs> it's, so you yeah. you you've probably heard of uh, you know your PT. So first of all, sure. it's that which is impressive. You know PT, they do the, the lasers to you know. So all right, so it actually causes your blood to come to the surface. And then when it returns to normal, so it causes vasoconstriction, vasodilation, right? So same as a hot and cold contrast bath. So it causes your blood to circulate uh, without, you know, without like your muscles doing it. So it, it takes all the lactic acid, etc. Mm -hmm. out. So it's hot. It's not hot at all. Oh, it's okay. not hot it's at all. It's just the light. Yeah, it's just mm -hmm. the light. An athlete may prefer to utilize cryotherapy versus our hot and cold plunge, or vice versa laser light therapy versus any other, any other modality we have here. So we're trying to give our athletes a full menu of recovery to choose from. Because recovery is so individualized, athletes prefer, um, as I said, one modality versus the next. So we're trying to have everything under one, one roof. For and different bodies respond to different things. And oh wow, sure. At some point, every form of recovery has its limits per athlete, so you you'd use different right. types of recovery. So this is a really important room for us. This is our hydrotherapy area. So here we have a hot plunge and a cold plunge, so contrast pools. And this is our high force underwater treadmill pool. So I'm gonna demo this for you real quick. So this is a treadmill. Um, hydraulically, an athlete would be lowered to the base of this pool. And if an athlete has a lower body injury, you can run on this treadmill. You can work on your gait with little stress on your body because you're working underwater. Now there are video cameras located around the corners of this pool and the feedback goes to this TV right here. So the coach can track the gait of the athlete and see where there is alignment and misalignment. Mm -hmm. So you see a lot of times when guys are coming back from a knee, hip, anchor, ankle injury, guys or gals are coming back, you tend to, once you break something in that chain, it starts throwing everything off. Sure. So you can run with as little resistance as you want, and then you can gradually add more and more of your own body weight, increase that resistance while you're, with, again, with that correct gait so you don't change anything. For instance, I tore that left knee, my left hip started hurting, now my right hip hurts, you know, and it's just once you throw things sure. in that chain off, your body compensates, and the compensation breaks that chain, leads to more injuries. You can ask someone like Dominic Cruz about that too, because he had injuries on his legs, and it affected his, affect his other leg, it affected his heel and his, his hamstring. Sure. I wanted to ask you, Forrest, now, you got started in MMA well before all this technology and science was introduced. Yeah. There isn't anything quite like this right now anywhere. And uh, I feel like the sport is kind of only just embracing that science and technology. When you started, would you have ever even thought of something like this being involved in the sport? No, I tore my knee in 12, I think. And I didn't even know this existed in 2012. So, right. no, this is, I mean, this is new. This is state of the art. Uh, again, we, we, we're we very lucky that every hockey, football, basketball, Major League Soccer team, they opened our doors to us because they don't see us as competitors. So they said, hey, sure. this is what works, this is what doesn't. I would have never thought, let's get a low-level laser light therapy. But <laughs> we've had several people that, you know, from trusted, world-renowned organizations say, hey, this thing works, you guys should get it, okay? Does this kind of stuff blow your mind almost a little bit considering because, I mean, you're not an old guy. It was relatively recently when you fought, and even the beginning of your career was relatively recently compared to, you know, the, the lifespans of, of most of the main sports. To see where it is now and what the UFC is doing now, does that kind of just like... No, not at all. It, it's the fifth major sport. You know, mm -hmm. I, I expected this 
in 1998 when I saw <laughs> the UFC, I said, that's, that's it, that's, that's the epitome of sport, I want to do that. And so it doesn't surprise me that, that the UFC now has positioned itself as the fifth sport in the world and that you know, we are now embracing the technology in a training camp environment and a mini camp environment that every other sports franchise has. No, it really doesn't surprise me at all. It, it kind of seems natural, right? Uh, there's talent, there's interest, there's money in this sport. Mm -hmm. why, why wouldn't all the technology and all that piece follow? We have a lot more to show you. We'll walk yeah. back up this way. So we have a dedicated physical therapy suite. Obviously, one of the pillars for what we're trying to do here is, again, keep UFC athletes healthy, but when they do get injured, provide world-class rehabilitation services. So in our back room right now is uh, Heather Linda. She's our director of physical therapy. She comes to us from the United States Olympic Committee. She's been there for six years, um, working with really high-performance athletes. Right? So you have a dedicated space, um, 1,100 square foot, um, for our dedicated PT uh, to work with our athletes. So would you, would you recommend almost any fighter if they get hurt? Because obviously you want Absolutely. dedicated, trained professionals to, to run them through there. Absolutely. And who would want to be in a project, in an environment overseen by HSS, you know? Of course. You want that number one. Apparently, I just, I just read all their slides. They're number one in the world in orthopedic surgery. So, there we go. I don't know what any of this stuff does. <laughs> <laughs> but she does. <laughs> that's all, that's all that matters. Does. As long as she does. Main strength and conditioning floor here. Uh, again, to highlight, the entire first floor of this facility is performance optimization based, so strength and conditioning, physical therapy, nutrition, we've hit on some of those. The entire second floor is sports specific MMA, so dedicated cardio space, um, walk bikes, woodways, rowers, airdynes, versa climbers, into our dumbbell, kettlebell area. Into our Olympic lifting platforms here, so four racks dedicated. Um, state-of-the-art technology as well. So each of these racks have video camera analysis capabilities. This also helps for sending the programs home with the fighter. So if you come out for a week or two, you can go home with the strength program that, that you've gone through with a professional, like with you know, Bo Sandoval, our head of strength and conditioning, so you know what you're doing, you know that you're doing the right thing. And then when you kind of get lost, you can kind of come back and check. And again, this is force plate, bilateral force plate. Again, talk about injuries. If you train correctly, if your weight is equal mm -hmm. distance, you're not going to get hurt. So, and that's, you know, that's that injury prevention piece. Again, the elite form, uh, like I said, bar speed measurements, stuff like that, something you're measuring. So if you go away for a month and you come back, you've gotten slower, you're, you've mm -hmm. gotten faster. What did you do? Like, you know, that clinical look, what changed to make you get faster? Let's keep doing that or what, you know, what's happening? So. How much will the coaches and, and doctors here communicate with the coaches at the fighters' gym, yeah. the, the individual fighters' gyms? Will there be a little bit of a give and take and back and forth? We're not trying to supplant their coaches. We're not trying to infringe on the team that they're already involved in. That's great. But what nobody's done well is put those pieces together. I mean, I used to do it, and I would go here for PT after I had injuries. I would go here and talk to my strength coach. I would do jujitsu here, boxing here. And you know, I had a nutritionist that I talked to on the phone every now and again. So now you've got a nutritionist and a strength coach and a PT that are all gonna talk together. And so the only thing you have to tell them is this is how much I did my MMA sports specific workout. This is my rate of perceived exertion. So, and now you're even keeping track of what you're doing, you know, your skill work, and you're seeing how that works in, in how that you know, works in with strength conditioning, PT. Again, I see a lot of guys that crush in the, in the weight room, and later that day, they go and hit mitts, and they, they don't look good. They don't look good when they need sure. to look good, so. When, when you were fighting, Forrest, uh, is there anything about this facility, any one thing that stands out, and you say, man, I wish I, I, wish I had this? There's a lot of things, and especially later in my career when I started having knee and shoulder injuries, so I, I wish I had Heather, a, a good PT, <laughs> that was free of charge, <laughs> that I could see, you know, three times a week. So a PT would have been one, but but the other would be exactly what I said, a nutritionist that talked to my strength coach that was on the same page, a PT that talked to my strength coach. So, so just the communication between those coaches. And that's why this is a nice space where everybody communicates and you can see we're they're, you know, still mm -hmm. we're, we're talking. There's, this athlete's doing X today and like a James mentioned about the nutrition, that's so important for the nutritionist to talk to the, to the athlete themselves about their MMA mm -hmm. workout and then to the strength and conditioning professional about, hey, 
is what I'm lifting today. This is, we're just doing 30 minutes today. Okay, let's dial back the calories. Mm -hmm. It's actually a good time to mention a hypoxic chamber. So within 40 minutes, this can be at any altitude on earth you want. It's just this in the, okay. in the glass. So. It's a sealed room. Yeah. Huh. The great thing about this for an MMA athlete would be when you're getting close to a fight and you're a little beat up, going go in a high oxygen, or low oxygen, I'm sorry, atmosphere, high altitude, low oxygen, and get your cardiovascular work in without putting a lot of strain on your joints, your back, your hips, and your knees. Make sense? Yeah. So that's, that's how you keep your, your lungs going the last couple weeks before a fight. I've already gotten a few workouts in on this track. Because when they were building the rest of it, this was the only thing you could work out in. So again, obviously you have the aspirational graphics around the facility. Uh, this is your track. That's uh, hot again. For your tires, your hurdles, battle ropes, Metal <laughs> rotational work at the base of this track. We're walking towards our impact wall right now, so that's a 90 degree impact wall. So obviously in this sport, rotational uh, power and torque is, is paramount. So this is where you take that med ball and you'd be lined mm -hmm. up right here and your and your coach is calling out three, four, A, B. And that's and you're cognitively and you're cognitively training alongside the physical mm -hmm. um, component of this as well. You notice another thing as we walk around, it's, it's really hard to get lost here, you know. The people that built this also build casinos, but they built this the opposite. <laughs> In casinos, you're always lost. This place, you always end up where you're supposed to be, you know. Uh, we built it with our locker rooms being the central point, athlete-centric. So every time you kind of go anywhere, you end up where you're supposed to be. We have everything you'd need here, including shades on these windows, <laughs> full-size boxing ring, suspension frame. Uh, so we actually been doing some warm-ups up here with fit lights. Something we saw as we kind of we went to different facilities instead of just static jumping rope or running. Guys were warming up with fit lights, kind of warming the mind up as well. And I thought it can't be a better sport to warm up your reaction time than, than fighting, right? Uh, bag area, we got a, this is actually really cool. It's not just a bar toy over here. The power cube. So it can tell you how hard you're hitting. And so, I mean, you know, everybody the first time they have to ah, yeah, of course. throw the baseball, but then you sit down and you throw a cross and then you're, you move your leg back and you throw the cross or you lean forward and you throw the cross. Or the, the protocol the guys gave me was real good. You throw five of each or three or four punches and then you do a couple rounds on the bag and then you go back and you throw them and you see how much you've changed, you know? If you're gradually, you know, throwing five or six punches and then three minutes or six minutes or five minutes, whatever the round, and then you go back and you can kind of see, <clears throat> you know, see your recovery. Hmm. Uh, see, something I learned even that I didn't know, and I've, I've owned a gym for years, these are two inch mats. The mat in the octagon is only an inch and a quarter. Hmm. These are inch and a half, two inch, uh, octagon, inch and a quarter. It's the exact octagon an athlete fights in. Full size? Full size, 30 foot, not the, uh, not the palms octagon. <laughs> the only difference obviously is the canvas, and I mean, or I mean the vinyl as opposed to canvas. But if you've ever been on the canvas, you'll know it, it eats your elbows and knees up and it's not, it's not possible to clean and sanitize. So that's the only difference. The thing that makes, uh, if you look up, you see it looks pretty damn impressive. That's competition lighting. So that's pretty much the same lighting you're gonna get when you're actually in the octagon. The thing that makes it special though are these Vicon cameras. Those are the high def, high, you know, they show the graphs and stuff. I'll kind of show you. And so this, if we're moving in there, you can see where people are, you know, kind of track if your head's over your foot or if you're falling down. Um, Again, you can switch cameras, you can review that later. Uh, you can turn lights on. <laughs> Every other sport does it, right? You watch your practice. Right. When is the greatest risk of injury? It's in sparring, mm -hmm. yet it has to be done, so you get the most out of it, you know? And again, that, that's kind of the, the take home message. Hey, if you're gonna do this, do it smart, do it when you're fresh, and then review it, you know, get the most out of it. And we'll look in here. You're so good at these segues. <laughs> you guys be spending a lot of time in here. 
Yeah. Is this the new so, media room? You're the welcome. Media media set, uh, tiered seating capacity for 60. Four translation booths in the back, uh, video camera platform. It can be closed off to the second floor, but at the same time, it can be open directly onto our center of competition, which is the Octagon. So, so you can imagine announcing a main event for UFC 220, uh, the video spot hits, curtains go back, athletes are squaring off. Maybe mm -hmm. like a hospital Octagon. for special services partnership could happen here, <laughs> you know. Another cool thing is we can do our summits here as well, but a, a lot of people that program the summits will also be on staff, so if someone needs some social media help, that's something we'll definitely, hey, here's some social media do's and don'ts. Here's how to maybe monetize your account. Here's, you know, some things that, that, that IMG stars have done to be successful. You know, here's how you can get yourself out there some more. So that's definitely something, if, if an athlete has a couple hours to kill between workouts, that we'd love to get them involved with our social team. We have a really good one here. Uh, and then, you know, as, as far as, you know, again, those events that I, I really like, the, uh, the new fighter summits and the, the veteran fighter summits, and 20 to 40 athletes, kind of in the same place in their career, that need the same help and assistance in life. And that's, you know, that's one of the better things we do here. So this is it. This is our relaxation lounge. Um, the aforementioned nap pods around the corner here. <laughs> so the logic behind this room is to build a non-gym room in a gym, right? So if an athlete has a 10 a.m. training session and a 4 p.m. training session, they don't have to go back to their hotel, right? They can dine on site at no cost come back here, play Xbox, watch movies, review film in here. Those nap pods uh, provide vibration and they play ambient uh, music and lighting as well. It's, it's, a, it's time to refresh and not be in that gym environment. Exactly. Except for the MMA games. But you play football games too. Those are pretty legit. Nobody on the staff's ever used them. People no, tell me. Time, <laughs> the athletes tell me that they're pretty good. Yeah. This is obviously a very expensive Institute facility. We got it on the cheap. Eight, <laughs> eight to twelve. Craigslist. Full time employees. It's a major investment in the sport. One that there may not be a, a tangible, short term. I mean, you know. But there's not going to be one it, you know? with the Cleveland Clinic or with the Hospital for Special Services Partnership. Again, it, it's a lot like you know with, with the deal with Reebok. You're, you're trying to become. It's that aspiration. We want to be the fifth major sport. You know, we want to, to treat our athletes like every other athlete. That's what you know. That, that it's part of that mission. This is an investment in the athletes. It's an investment in the sport. This is not meant to. This building will lose not, money. This is not meant yeah. to be. Yeah. Uh, you guys are going to lose money from this. Yeah. But indirectly, we know that it'll impact the sport in, 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 in the sense that we envision it. You know, I, loved, I, t I listened to Lawrence speak the other day uh, about the history of the UFC, and, and it, it's, it's in keeping with UFC running towards regulation. Let's make it as safe as it can be. Let's regulate. Let's study the effect effects of the sport on the body. Let's, you know, it, again, it's that, it's, it's forward thinking. It's very progressive. This is the media holding lounge. Yes, yeah, so a dedicated lounge uh, for media. So again, right. going to the theme of this campus and the efficiency of the design, Dedicated entrance for staff on the west side of the campus. Dedicated entrance for athletes directly below us right now. We're standing above reception uh, when we have formal press events. Is there anything I didn't ask you about that you'd want to you want to share or? No, I, I can honestly say I'm very I'm proud to be a part of this. You know, it's a great group of people. Um, it, 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 I'm thinking back. You know, I was just thinking today we're just having our first debrief after day one. We got the head of of performance that we wanted. We got the, you know, we got the VP of performance, Duncan. He was the guy we wanted. We got the nutritionist we wanted. You know, we got the strength coach we wanted. We got the PT we wanted. We were really fortunate uh, to get all these people that wanted to be a part of such an integrated high performance program with, you know, Olympic level backgrounds from, you know, multi countries, multi, you know, so, you know, I'm, I'm just really happy we got the staff we did, even the interns. I'm excited. Now, the point is, this is a world-class facility, but we've assembled a world-class staff. Yeah. And each one of them left That's what I meant tremendous jobs in sport performance for a facility that when they took the job was a construction we're, we're site. We're walking them through concrete and there were no said, athletes. use your imagination. <laughs> right. It's got to so be a they all saw the opportunity to truly affect change, and that's what we're hoping to do. So if day one's in the, any indicators, they're all studs.
Well, this has been uh, a great tour, guys. Thank you so much. He's already taken off. Forrest <laughs> yeah, is already yeah, taking sure. off his microphone. But uh, for Forrest Griffin, for James Kimball, I'm Mark Redmondy for MMAFighting.com. Thanks for hanging out with us. Bye-bye.